Chemical composition, basically what makes up a compound and in what amounts. So the first type we talk about is percent composition. Percent composition is basically what percentage of the mass of the entire compound does the mass of one element make up. Um, it's very relative. It doesn't really tell you number, like number of atoms or number of moles. You gotta figure that out for yourself. Um, but it's pretty easy to do. It shows mass of the element divided by mass of the compound times 100%. Pretty simple. Yeah, what's the mass compound? You're gonna see. So, if you wanna find the percent composition of each element in NaCl, first you gotta know the mass of NaCl. So the mass of NaCl is the mass of Na plus the mass of Cl, oh, mass of NaCl. I get it. So your percent mass of sodium is sodium divided by all of it times 100. Chlorine would be chlorine divided by all of it times 100. And, and all your percentages darn well better add up to 100. Or you have yourself an issue. Can we learn about this? What? Can we learn about this? Yes. Okay. We did? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get like these sheets and study types. Sure. So formulas. You have molecular formula, empirical formula. Molecular formula is very exact. It is exactly the number of any given element you have in a compound. Empirical formula just shows you the ratio. So N2O4, you have two nitrogens and four oxygens, exactly. Whereas empirical is, you have twice as many oxygens as you do nitrogen. Right? You have a one to two ratio. So this would be molecular. This can be reduced down to NO2, which would be the empirical. So unlike percent compositions, it doesn't have anything to do with mass. It's all about atoms or moles. So like on test, you'd be like... So empirical formulas are molar ratios. You need to know that term. Molar ratios or ratios of the moles, right? Um, they're not as specific as molecular formulas, but I personally think they're a little bit better than percent composition. Um, and then you simply divide each subscript by the greatest common factor, right? So N2O4, the greatest common factor is 2. You divide both by 2, you get N1O2, and you just leave the 1 off. All right, just reduce, reduce the fraction type deal. All right, so we did this one on Friday. A compound has 4.15 grams of aluminum and 3.692 grams of oxygen. What's empirical formula? Well, empirical formula, remember, means molar ratio. So first you gotta find the moles. So go from grams to moles in both of them. Okay, just like that. Then you, right? Exactly, you, you figure out which one of these two is the smallest, it's this one. Divide them both by 153.1539. So you get one mole of aluminum for every one and a half moles of oxygen. You find out which one's the smallest, and you divide everything by that. Because you have to see how many there are relative to each other, because you have to figure out the ratios. Okay. So... Um, you can't have a decimal, so instead of AL1 O1.5, you double it, so you have AL2 O3. You might also get a situation where it tells you like 2 and 4, and that wouldn't work either, because that wouldn't be an empirical formula. So sometimes you might have to double them to, to give them whole numbers. Sometimes you might need to divide them to make it an empirical formula. Because Al2O4 isn't an empirical formula. It's not reduced down to lowest terms. Gotcha. All right. So here's one. Give it a shot. Spend a minute on it. I'll check back in with you in a minute. And let's go smart board mode, and let's uh, show you how this is done. It's on like Donkey Kong. <laughs> Grams of hydrogen is going to equal how many moles of hydrogen? Zero point zero. No. Zero point three. 
0.061. Okay. So, if you convert grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen, you get that. How many moles of phosphorus? Approximately 0.1021. 0.1021. 0.1021. Kyler? All right. And 6.531 grams of oxygen is going to be what? What? 0.4. Oh, my God. Okay. You would divide them all by this. By which one? The smallest. But you should all be able to see, right, about 0.1, about 0.4, 0.3. So it's going to be 3 to 1 to 4. Or you could divide them all by this number, and you would get the same answer. Mm -hmm. So then your formula is going to be H3, only 1P, and 4 oxygen. All right. Molecular formulas are the most specific way to describe the elements in a compound. It tells you exactly how many there are. Um, it's actual number of atoms, it's not percentages, it's not ratios, it's very specific. It's generally one more step of work than an empirical formula is, but it tells you a lot more information. Here's an example. You find uh, the empirical formula of a substance, it is P2O5. The <clears throat> molar mass of the substance is 283.88 grams. What is the molecular formula? So, a couple things. First off, this problem was nice enough to give you the empirical formula already. Sometimes it won't give that to you, and so first... You'll have to do what we did last slide and find the empirical formula, and then from there you'll uh, be where you are right now and have to solve the problem. So if the whole thing weighs 283.88 grams, and we know the ratio is 2 to 5, we know that the empirical is P2O5, what can we do to find the molecular formula? What I would do is I would add up the mass of the empirical formula. If you add up the weight of two phosphoruses and five oxygens, P2O5, you get 141.94, which is just about half of this. So what that tells us is the empirical formula is half of the molecular formula. So since the empirical formula was P2O5, the molecular is P4O10. So basically all it is is you find the empirical first and then figure out the difference in the weights and if you need to multiply by 2 or 3 or 4 and that's pretty much it. So try this first one on your own. All right, let, let me get you started on a hint for this one. Pretend, just pretend, that you have 100 grams of the substance. If you have 100 grams of the substance, you'll know how many grams of all of these you have, right? Because 49.47% of 100 grams would be 49.47 grams. So now you know the masses of all. Grams per mole. There's two ways. One, you can take 49.47% of 194, right? 5% of one, blah, 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 and do that math and then get your actual grams and then go grams to moles and see your ratios. Or you can go from 100, and that's the way I prefer to do it, and then I'll show you what we do. So if you just pretend there's 100, you have 49.4. 7 grams of carbon. If you convert that to moles, how many moles does it equal? 4.12. would be 4.12 yeah. moles of carbon. All right. So then 